folks. Um, as I mentioned a little while back, uh, I'm here again with uh, at Bill Shop's layout, and I mentioned and showed some of the buildings that he built out of blocks, and I thought it was a very interesting technique that I personally had not seen before, and I asked Bill if he would mind at some point doing a video and actually showing us how he does this, and he agreed, but he said, but we have to make a building for your layout, so I was like, oh gee, twist my arm, so okay, so what we've done is I've come up with a building that we're going to actually make for the layout, we're going to take you through and show it, um, the first thing we're going to do is kind of look at some of the various raw blocks and show you the actual building so you get an idea of how Bill makes the blocks and then how it actually turns into a building. It really is pretty interesting. And then what we're going to do, I'll just come over here and show you. This is the building that I picked. We're not going to duplicate it exactly. This is a small, yeah, thanks Bill. It's a small, I guess you'd call it, looks like almost like an office with a little intervening walkway and then a, sh a storage shed. This is actually located in, or was located, in Wayscale, Pennsylvania, on the Pennsylvania Railroad, on the Shemokin branch. I think it's a cool looking little building. I can use it in my engine service area. It's the right size. It's got some neat looks to it. And I think it's going to look pretty cool. You know, it's, it's got some nice shapes for Bill to show us how to cut the blocks and make an actual block building out of it. So we're going to show you how we're going to make that. But first what we're going to do is Bill will take some of these blocks. We'll walk over and actually show you the buildings so you can kind of get an idea. And I'll let Bill talk then and kind of explain what he does and some of his techniques and we'll look at some of those, and then we'll go down to the workshop and actually cut some blocks for the, the way scales building that we're going to build. So let's get some of these moved over, and we'll show you how they look in real life. Action. All right, this uh, first one here, Bill's going to talk about it. It's actually a replica of a Lehigh Valley Tower. So, Bill, go ahead and show us what you got here. I, I think the Lehigh Valley was one of the few railroads that had these. Maybe, maybe there's another one. I believe they call these sunshade towers. And I really liked it, but I thought, how am I going to do this roof? Um, and this was probably the trickiest sawing operation. I don't think, I told Rob, I don't think I'll do any more because I like having my hands. But <laughs> I'm not sure how, if you didn't use blocks, you could do a roof like that. To me, that was the trick. Mm -hmm. So it was just a matter of cutting these, and I cut enough pieces where I can do three of them. And I just shingled it along here and then shingle this one a little bit different along here and I had my roof. Now I it's two stories and I wanted the window shades to show so I thought well I'll cut it out and this I would not do this again because <laughs> you're you're taking you're taking your saw and you're running that through the saw blade dadoing off like on an eighth of an mm -hmm. inch at a time and then you got to go over like this and like that. But I wanted to have the open area. If you wanted to detail the inside of that and light it, it would be, it would be perfect. But again, it's kind of tricky to do, but if you wanted to attempt something like that, but um, with my warning, it's, it's tricky. You can see you, know, you messed it up a little bit. But then over the top, um, hang on a second. Yeah, I'm going to come around here and I'll try to see if I can get this tower a little bit more from this angle here. There's a side view of the tower. You can see the, the little sheds. Okay. So to make the, the wall holes over the top, what I would do is I just put the wall on like this. I would mark it and then cut that, and then I have I have the wall. Then I mark on the back where I want my window openings to be. Oops. Uh oh. <laughs> Kit down. They're with the kit. <laughs> Might not be using that one. Yeah. Uh, that's all right. Um, and then um, you cut those, and then you can you do that for each of the four walls. And then okay. You're, mm -hmm. and then you're then you're good to go. Okay. Yep. So. Um, so that's if I had to tower, do it again, yeah. I would probably just make this a solid block, and not worry about what's behind it and not bother about lighting. Because this is actually, if I look at this, but I just want to, this is actually four pieces. 
No, it's one piece. Is it really? It's one piece, yeah. It's, one whole piece? Okay. Yeah, you can see the, See, it looks like it's like pieces can, that were glued together there. No, you can see the grain. Just, you're cutting, you're running it through the saw. Okay. Like this, so you're getting kind of an idea. That's how you get cut. that line there? Okay. Because yeah, you can see the grain goes straight up. So, mm -hmm. And it's it's brittle. That's <laughs> what okay. just discovered. Well, what's the material? What, it, um, that's probably some kind That looks like fur. Probably. Okay. Might have been better to do it out of pine. Um which I found out something later, if you guys don't know. When you go into a lumber company and it says SPF wood and you think it's pine, it means it's either spruce, pine, or fir. One of the three. And I much prefer pine, but okay. it seems like most of the stuff is fir. Fir? Hmm, okay. And uh, fir, to me, is a little bit more brutal. And, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. It's just probably a personal preference. But, okay. Anywho. All right, so that's the example of a tower cut out for an interior detail. So let's go look at the, the next building. All right, here's an example of another small building with multiple pieces, and I'll let Bill go ahead and explain this one. Um, this is just kind of a, something I just sort of imagineered. It wasn't based on anything. Um, it's supposed to be kind of an office storage shed kind of thing, but there's one block, two, three, four, five blocks on it. So, uh different ways to do this. I didn't have a block high enough, so I took another piece. I would just glue that on. They're the same same width. So I got that glued on. All I tried to do for you guys is make something sort of similar. This is an exact, but it's close. Then you've got this piece that has the same roof pitch. That goes like that. And you got these two little guys, little sheds coming out. It would go like that. Mm -hmm. And then where the overhanging shed off the second floor. Oh, on the second guns. floor, yep, yep. We'll put it on this side. It's going to really be on the other side. Okay. That would come off like that. Now, what you would do then, you would, again, take your piece. Once this is glued together, take your piece of wood, uh, clapboard siding, northeastern clapboard siding, on the back, mm -hmm. just scribe it, and then cut it out. Do the same over here. Do the same on these walls, on, on the side, whatever you need to do. Just cut them out, making sure your clapboard is, you know, the, going the right direction. Or you the correctly. Mm -hmm. Right. And and then we'll, you'll cut your window openings, and we'll do that later with Rob's building. And then um, you just go from there. So that's one piece. And then you do the same thing with this one. And to me, if I didn't have these, I think it would take a lot of time. And, I mean, to make these little pieces... Out of little pieces of clapboard and brace it, and I, don't, <laughs> I mean, to me, it, yeah, yeah. it's it, it's a time saver. Plus, you don't have to square anything up. If, as mm -hmm. long as your fence and your saw blade are square, everything's going to be square, and you don't have that problem when you're dealing with little pieces. That's always a problem. It's going to be glued at 88 degrees or 93 degrees, or mm -hmm. and then it's going to show later on. Okay, so that's an example of and then multi. You just, then you just put the roof on and. Whatever, whatever you want. Yeah, and then this roof. particular one looks like you kind of use some metal. That's builders and scale. Builders and scale. The uh, with the uh, radio shack etching fluid. The etching technique on the to, yeah, we to weather about, them. We yep. Talked about that last time. Yeah. All right. So there's an example. Let's uh, let's show. You what, well, let's see. We'll go see one or two more. Okay. All right, here you go. Go ahead, Bill. You put it right All in front right. of it there. Uh, this is uh, Fred Herman's sausage. It actually was in Tampa, Florida, but my story, they moved north because I love the sign. Um, again, this building slopes down. The bottom, the, the, the back side is, is lower than the front side. So to make that with straight clapboard bracing construction to me would be, you could do it, but it would be a real pain. Mm-hmm. So what you do is I just got a block, and these are thinner. They're not, they're not deep enough, but just to demonstrate what we're doing. You can cut your block. I tried to do that with a similar roof line here. You can see it's not quite as high, but it's close, just to give you the idea. And you can see these, these slope down to the back. So what you do, now if these were glued together, it would be a little easier to handle. Glue those together. Again, take your trusty piece of board, which I don't have one white enough, but you do that, and then you'd, again, just mark it. Oh, the whole, th oh. yeah. You don't want to drop one, but. 
can't break anyway. That's a yeah, big exactly. Solid block. block. So yeah. Don't break. Um, and again, the the clapboard would have to be longer. It's just a demonstration. Okay. Yep. Just mark that along the line and then cut it. And I would probably have it the same depth all the way through. Again, these are just sample pieces to give you an idea of how it went together. Um, you could have these at differing leg w depths and then run through the saw later on. It'd probably be easier to do it ahead of time. Then when you get a piece like this, you see that little angle there. Well, that's, how are you gonna do that? Get that straight? Well, you just take a piece of cardboard, which I had. Well, let's say this is a piece of cardboard. Put it on there like that. Then again, just mark it. Mm -hmm. Then once you get it marked, then put it on your clapboard with that top part up, and then you've got the slope in it, goes right on, fits perfect. And you can do the same thing down here. You've got that little skewed, it's been a while since I've been in geometry, I don't know what you call that, a trapezoid or... <laughs> We're too old, remember that, Bill? <laughs> kind of parallelogram. <laughs> but you could put that on there, um, get, your, get your siding going straight, and um, mm -hmm. it's just an easier way to do it. You could do the same thing, same thing down here. So it's just a matter of once they're all glued together, here's one that is actually glued together. Um, just, and we'll do this with Rob, just, there's your siding. Bing, bing, bing. Take your magic cutter, yep. cut it out, and you've got it. And then you cut your window openings where you want and go from there. Awesome. Um, so there's okay. that one. Let's, uh, uh, let's take a pause here and get one more. Go. When you have a building like this, and Bar Mills has a couple. In fact, um, the next kit I build is going to be a Sokol's, and I think it has kind of been a regular shape. And I was telling Rob a few minutes ago, on one of their kits, they wanted you to file that corner down. <laughs> well, it's like five inches long, and to file that down and get it a perfect bevel, that's beyond my capability. Well, I'd never do it. I yeah, know I just I know I would screw it up. So what you could do, I made two of these. Um, if this is your footprint, if you're scratch building this thing, okay, this is your footprint, and so I didn't waste a bunch of expensive scrap wood. What I did was just take a couple pieces of cardboard to show you. Um, Two advantages here. One, you got a foundation. This is three quarter inch thick. So I put a three eighths inch piece of wood here that you can cut on the saw and glued it on like this. So it's glued on to three eighths inch of the pine and I put a little supporting piece here just to stabilize it. And you cut your piece exactly that length, okay? You cut this piece exactly that length. And these are the windows. Now, if you did this, you'd have all the windows cut out You'd have the windows in, glass, shaded. You'd have everything painted, be mm -hmm. ready to go, all mm -hmm. braced, everything. Then you put it on. Now you've got this floppy thing. But the beauty of this, now, just take a little piece of wood, hold that together, glue it, and you've got that corner. Yep. So that corner is going to be, well, <laughs> hmm. corner should be. Pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Like that. Yep. For hand holding cardboard together in the in right, air as right. I film it. Yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> Shaky old guy. <laughs> then on for the corner post, you could just take a piece of two by twelve and just run it right up there, and you've done away with having to bevel it. Mm -hmm. um, plus, everything's going to be square. You could actually do this with every building you make. If it's just take a rectangle, if you're scratch building it, and do it that way, then you've got the foundation. That could be. That's too much concrete for you. Make it less if you want more, whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you cut these out, um, one thing you do have to consider is is the is the door going to fit in there? So that might be you know you might have to just watch the door to be at the foundation you might, level. You might have to chisel out mm -hmm. around it or something mm -hmm. to do that if, yep. you, if you had a door. But that's just another kind of way to if you have an irregular footprint uh, of using this, the the uh, wood shop and the saw to. Uh, Make it a little bit easier. Nice. Okay. okay. All right. So with that, what we're going to do now, I'm going to show you some examples and show you how how you know Bill's technique with the with the various blocks. We'll go down to the workshop and we'll actually start cutting the blocks 
and we will have some disclaimers for safety. Uh, but we will show you how, uh, or Bill's going to show you, how to actually cut the blocks for the building that we're going to make for my layout. So let's go down to the shop. All right, uh, to make the blocks, the conventional thickness of wood, you can get three-quarter wood, one-by-fours, three-quarters, or two-by-fours or an inch and a half. A lot of times you're going to need more than that. You're going to need something that's three inches high. So how do you do that? Well, um, you clamp stuff together. I did a couple of these ahead of time, and I got a tip on gluing I'll show you. But here's a three-quarter board. Looks like a half-inch board, an inch and a half board. So I'm yeah, two and three quarters. Yeah, we're two and three quarter inches here. Um, and you can do these in different ways. Here's a inch and a half and a half, so that's probably two inches. Um, this one looks to be about two and five eighths inches. Okay. Now, when you glue them, or when you pick your wood out, I, I picked an exaggerated one out because when I go to Lowe's and buy wood, I usually have to look through ten pieces to find one that's you got good. That right, yeah. <laughs> If you get down the angle on that, you see how skewed that is? You, know, <laughs> you don't want to use a board like this because once you start gluing it together, you're going to have all kinds of misshape. Nothing's going to be square. So you probably just want to throw this out because this, this has got a bad warp in it. Yeah, I'm not sure how well I'm, I can see it from yeah. behind the camera. I can see it. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it down yeah. there or not, but it's, yep. it's, it's pretty badly warped. Um, so you want to get pretty good wood, and, and I, to be honest, we have a, a wood-burning stove, and the last couple days, well, you can see right here. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> how bad that wood is. Uh, a lot of pieces I just inadvertently threw into the kindling box, and I just rescued those. Um, to glue those together, um, let's give you a, a little... All right, I'm just using, uh, I use Tight Bond Premium Glue, uh, yellow glue. Um, I think any yellow glue will work. It's no big deal. And you just spread a thing on it. Now, the problem you may have is this stuff wants to slide. When you clamp it, it wants to slide. So what I found, if you go like that and just kind of tighten it up a little bit, and I can feel it's a lot tighter. Okay, you go like this. Now, one of the issues I always have, I still do it, I know it's going to do it, and I still do it because I'm stupid. <laughs> That's going to move. <laughs> now, you can minimize that a little bit if you wanted to wait a half a minute or 45 seconds to let that glue set up just a little bit. That would work. You don't want to over clamp it. I just use in these little Irwin clamps you can get at Lowe's, or you can go to Harbor Freight and get. These are a third of the price and they work just as good. Not quite as good. But... And just a little bit of pressure. The glue that squeezes out, just wipe it out. Because that's not going to show. But over the next minute or two, I just keep an eye on it and see if it moves. Because sometimes you get a little bit of pressure, that thing's going to, it's going to shift. I don't think this one will because when you go back and forth and wiggle it like that and you wait just a little bit, then you're good to go. So you'd want to let that set up. Probably three hours would okay. be good. Mm -hmm. Some people say overnight. Yeah, pretty much in three hours, nothing's going to happen to it. All right, so Bill's getting this all ready. And what, what I had done is I took this and I drew a real rough again. That We're not trying to exactly duplicate this building because I, I, I can only do so much from a photograph. But we have the rough dimensions. We have the, the one. Bill's got some skill dimensions there. We have the one end shed, it's about 24 foot long, 16 foot wide by roughly 10 foot high, and then plus the pitch of the roof. The little intermediary office there, or walkway from the office to the shed, is about 12 foot by 10 foot length width and about 12 foot high, because it does look like it's a little bit taller than the shed. And then kind of the office area, I made that 30 foot by 18 foot length width by 18 foot high to the top of the pitch of the roof so Bill's taking that he's got some raw blocks ready uh, he's got the saw ready and then we'll show you how we go ahead and cut these you want to wear these also I just did this for my own purpose um, when you're cutting stuff I did you know on scale feet 8 10 12 14 through 20 and then 24 and 30 how many actual inches that is so that when I'm down here I can just quickly refer to it and don't have to keep bringing my scale ruler out so what we want here is a building 16 scale feet wide, which would be 
2 and 3 sixteenths. But to get 2 and 3 sixteenths, you have to remember this is going to be sided over with uh, board and batten siding from Northeastern. They're about a sixteenth thick, aren't they? Just about, yes, yes. they are. Yep. So you'd want to subtract a sixteenth and a sixteenth or an eighth. So you would actually want the block to be 2 and 1 sixteenth. And when you add the siding, you're going to have your 2 and 3 sixteenths. And we're going to try to make this right to scale, even though even though it, it's not between tracks, you might be in a place where a sixteenth of an inch means a boxcar hitting it or something like that. So you might want to pay attention to that. So I've got the saw set up at two and sixteenth. I'm going to cut that. And again, I don't mean to talk down to anybody. Some of you guys out there know a whole lot more about this than I do. Um, and some of you might be kind of new to this. Generally speaking, you want to keep the saw blade just a little bit above the board. You wouldn't want to cut you wouldn't want to cut a real thin board with that blade hanging way up mm -hmm, in there. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, see that? <laughs> Get this shirt out of the way. Don't let a loose sleeve hang Nothing out. hanging or hair or ponytails or yeah, whatever. I was, <laughs> I was cleaning one time and a little girl was watching me. And she leaned over and caught her and ripped down, ripped her whole shirt off. And I mean, it was Oh yeah, what's it? Oh man, so it's scary. Wanted, yep. Yeah. So... Notice the other thing, my hand's not near that. First thing I would do if you're going to go out and buy a saw, get this, get a couple, three of those, get these, mm -hmm. <laughs> anything to keep your hands away from that. So, okay, now we need this to be 24 feet long. 24 feet long was our width. width. Let me get my drawing. It is, yes, 24 feet. Okay. 24 feet is 3 and 5 sixteenths. So, like okay, so we got that mark, 3 and 5 sixteenths. That's going to be 24 feet. Um, the only two tools you need for this, this is a Delta. I have a Delta 10 inch table saw. With a 10 inch saw, you probably get about 3 inches where you can cut before it stops. Um, that's a 10 inch a Makita 10 inch sliding compound miter saw, and I'll show you how that works in a minute too. But all I'll do is I'll just chop that off. It's easier to chop it on the miter saw, so we can go over here. Okay. What the what the miter saw does is you can slide it like this. You get any angle up to forty five degrees either way. I'll set it at zero. It's compound because you can also do that. It's sliding because you can do that. So <laughs> that's what a sliding compound miter saw is. Um, I'm going to set that on there. Mark that right on my blade. This is what I would always recommend. Keep your hand away from that. See, the problem you have with, with this, you've got this opening here. And I'll show you this in a minute. That board can move. And you don't want your hand anywhere near it. So what I would recommend you doing is try to put pressure down, and the way this is shaped, it lets you put downward and forward pressure. Push that into your saw. Okay, that's our basic block. Now, we want that 10 feet high. Okay, and we've got to cut a pitch. And if you remember that picture, that was almost a flat roof. This obviously wasn't in Erie, Pennsylvania, where we had 200 inches of snow or it wouldn't have made it. <laughs> but it was a very narrow pitch, so what do you think, like five degrees? Yeah, just just a little bit of a pitch to okay. it. Okay, yeah. I'm not going to make this cut, and I'll explain to you why. I've got my blade tilted at five degrees. If I run that through, first of all, the cutoff piece is going to be trapped. Not a good idea, because you don't know what it's going to do. Um, I've got a hole in the wall over there where a piece got trapped and punched a hole in the in the wall. Plus, you're walking this through, and once you get out to about here, you lose control of this. So, would you? Not all saws have this capability, but what I can do is I can flip my fence. So, I'm going to flip the fence around so that the fence is facing this way, and you'll see why this is safer. So, okay. Now, what I've done, I've moved my fence to the left side. And again, not all saws have that capability. Um, this is a unifence, it'll do that. 
Now you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna, the cutoff piece is going to be over here, and I'm going to have control on this inside piece because I want to keep it down, pressure down, and against the fence. If it's the other way around, I'm going to lose it. And the cutoff piece is going to drop off. Nothing's going to fly off and hit me in the face. Um, now, I don't know exactly where I need to set this blade for the pitch or for the, if it's going to reach up to, the, to a ridge, but I might have to do a second cut, but that's, that's okay. So I kept my uh, zero insert in there when I tip the blade, it's not going to move. So this is a dado cutting uh, insert. It allows, it allows you to tip it. So we will use this to make our cut. Flip the piece over to cut the other side, and now you see we have it looks like about that pitch. It's almost a flat roof, not quite. Um, but we've got our pitch, we made the safe cut, the cutoff piece went off to the side. One nice thing with the wider opening here, any little piece will slide down underneath. Um, sometimes it'll get caught in there and just shut that saw off and, and pull it out. So now the last thing we have to do we have to determine the height of the building from the peak of the ridge to the base and we'll have to cut this off but that'll be real simple so all right uh, here's what we need to do um, we got our peak and I just drew those lines on there because I'm cleft and I wanted to make sure that I cut this the right way we need to cut to this line so from here to the bottom of the roof is 10 feet okay I'm gonna do this on the miter saw but here's what I was saying a little bit ago if I put that here I don't know if Rob's camera will pick that up. That's dangerously close to being off that fence. Yeah, let me just, oh, I'm just going to move my, hold on, folks. I'm just going to move this so you can, this is important. We want you to be safe doing this stuff. So, okay, good. Now, this is a safe cut if you do it right. But if you're here, you push in, and that moves, piece mm. is going to go flying there. I mean, it tears. It flies there. It could go, who knows where it's going to go. So that's why they call these sacrifice fences. Just take an old piece of wood and put across there. Now, again, you want pressure into that and down. That's why these are beautiful with that little... Bring it in here so we can... That little notch. There you go. Perfect. Because okay? yep. you can go down and up. So all you got to do is set that on the line. And I'm going to push real hard against that piece of pine. go. There's our shed. There's the basic of the shed on the left hand side of the picture. Perfect. All right. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other one. Now this other one is not very long. So I'm going to do a longer piece to do it safe, maybe three inches long, and then just cut off our little, we're probably going to have an inch or three quarters of an inch, but Small I don't want to be fooling around right. with three quarters. Not in a saw. Right, right. No, yep. no. Okay. Okay. So we'll put this aside piece one. Okay. Yep. Um, Doing the middle piece now, it's 10 feet wide, which is one and three eighths inches. We've got to account for the two pieces of clapboard side or the board and bat siding, which is a 16th and a 16th. So we're going to cut this at one and a quarter. Um, I'm going to just keep the uh, fence on the left side so I don't have to shift it again because we're going to have to make that same roof cut in just a second. So again, you'll notice the blade is just. Yeah, yeah, the blade is just above there, so we should be good. Um, one other thing you'd want to do, check here. When you move the blade back, just make sure that's set right. You might have to adjust the, the tilt to get it at 90 degrees. And just a machine a square or something will be fine for that. So this is going to clear here. I'm good. So this 
this little fella now is going to go here, but obviously we've got to uh, do a cut. And I think what I'll do this time is, I think, uh, no I won't, I'll keep it the same. I'll keep it the same way. Uh, we're going to, uh, now again, do the same kind of cut as we did before at 5 degrees. So we want our cut to be roughly like that. Here, tilt it down just a little. Okay. Ooh. We want the cut. And I'm just marking that just so that as I put it through, I'm not... You, you're not oriented yeah, in the soil. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah keep my orientation straight. Yep. Okay. Got it. Go. Okay, we've got that at um, 5 degrees. I'll lock the saw down. And I may have to make a second cut. We'll see. Um, actually, we won't make a second cut because it won't make any really won't make any difference, but I'll put that just a little closer. Because we're going to cut some off the bottom anyway, so we're good. Okay. Again, you want to try to keep pressure with the holder against the fence and down. Flip it, you get the cut. Okay, so just run it one way, flip it over the other way, and you've got your you've got your cut. Now what we need to do is we need to get that 12 feet from here to the bottom back. to show you how good we are. <laughs> how lucky we are. <laughs> we needed that one and five eighths from here to here. Remember back there I said, well it doesn't make any difference. It almost did. We're perfect. We're perfect because one and five eighths. That's about the difference. If you look at that picture, it's just about the difference. There. Yeah, tilt it kind of so you okay. can see. Yeah, it's right here. We notice that this is slightly higher than the shed, so that's where we're trying to get that difference right there. Hmm. Okay. All right. Now all we have to do is cut this piece twelve feet long. Go. Um, th these were glued together. They're a little bit off. Um, I want that perfectly smooth so they join together perfectly. So just put it in here and use your push stick. Okay. Now 12 feet. 12 feet is 1 and 5 eighths. So we will measure that at 1 and 5 eighths. And again, these dimensions we're using are all estimates because I'm just going off a okay. off a drawing or actually a photograph in a book. So we're just kind of winging it here. This but. is our keeper piece for the inner shed now. Okay, so we'll just and I set the teeth so they're just on the outside of that mark. Again, uh, that's only an inch and five eighths from the edge of this to here. So don't do this. <laughs> Don't bring that saw down with your hand here. Hold it like that. Um, we're good against the fence because I've got rigidity on both sides, so I don't need the sacrifice board. This piece is long enough to not need it if you've got a short piece. So, the Bennett Choff team <laughs> is two thirds. Home. <laughs> there you go. Look at that. Okay. Cool. Now I just asked Rob, do you think this is faster than doing this by, you know, with a straight clapboard? And we both agreed a lot faster. Okay. Now, one other thing I'd like to show you guys while we're at it. Um, I've got a little short piece here. If I wanted to cut that, um, again, I, I've got that problem there. Um, my suggestion would be anything this short or shorter don't bother with. And here's something you really don't want to bother with. Even if you have a sacrifice board, see how that is? Mm. Don't try to, if you say, I want to make, I'd like to make a little 
piece like a lot of those up here like this. I'll just cut this off. Now the problem you're going to have is when you push into that, you can't push straight because that's it's going to want to move because you're, you don't have a 90 degree push. Don't do that. <laughs> just don't do that. Make sure it's blocked, you know, out here. And again, the only time you would need these if you had a real short piece. Now you could do that. Um, well, let's see. You could do this as long as you hold it. You got the sacrifice piece, so you can push and push down, and it's not going to move. It's not going to go through anything. Mm. But you got to use this. You don't want to get your hand any. Well, your finger, your, your finger will be part yeah, of the piece. Yeah, because you don't know. Piece. Some, sometimes <laughs> a piece will kick, and when they mm -hmm. kick, you don't know what they're going to do. Um, so now we need to do the third piece. Okay, according to Rob's calculations, um, <laughs> is that scary? <laughs> <laughs> no scarier than me. Um, we're going to need the, the the peak of this roof is 18 feet, which is two and a half inches. Um, I've got two and three quarters here, so it should be enough. I won't take off very much. I'll just shiver it off. Um, so this is four and an eighth, that's 30 feet. So I'm going to cut this off. I already smoothed that on this edge. We'll cut this off and then we'll do, um, we'll do our width and then we'll do our roof. Again, because we're so smart, <laughs> we needed this to be two and a half inches. Guess what? It's about two and fifteen thirty seconds. So <laughs> we're Close good. enough. We're good. Actually, actually, it's two and a half inches. Um, we need to shave. We need to shave a little bit off. I think this is just about perfect. It's just about what we need. So we've got the right width. We've got the right length. Now what we've got to do, and we've chosen to make this a 30 degree cut. Um, we might change that down to 25 just to give us a little bit more room. Okay. Um, I think we'll do it at 25. And that will give... That will give the taper here, the, the pitch of the roof, which is going to be dramatically different than the 5 degrees on these. Mm -hmm. So we'll set the saw up at 25 degrees and then we'll make our cut. I'm going to deliberately do this in three or four passes because it's a little close. I, I want to make sure that I have enough height on this. So I'm going to cut off just a little bit at a time. I'll run it through this way and I'll flip it and I'll run it through that way. I'll probably have to do it a couple more. And I want to get it where the saw blade is hitting right there and then I'll cut it off down here for the height. And then we'll have this all done.
that way because I wanted to preserve as much height as I can. I needed two and a half inches. I've got two and three quarters, so it's good. So now all I have to do is cut, just so you guys can see it, uh, I just need to cut this down here so that from the peak to here is two and a half inches. All right, so there's the, again, the rough building, the three pieces. And now the next step is uh, if I go back upstairs to Bill's model rarity workshop and work on the siding. Okay, we have our board and batten siding. It's northeastern, I think it's at least five inches. Um, six inches, six inches by 24. So we're going to make the walls here. Um, on the original, there are no windows on the shed wall. So for three of the walls, so what I would recommend you doing, if you're doing this, is just put this on here like this. You want to mark the back, because those bats are going to be trouble marking around. And I'm just gripping it kind of like that, so I've got a good solid grip on it. And I want to make sure that, put this over here so you can see it, make sure that this end is even. And I just draw a line here like this. Okay. That'll be my cut line. So next step is pretty straightforward. I just put a new, um, new fresh blade in, and it's just a matter of. And I kind of score this a little bit light. I don't put a lot of downward pressure on it to try to keep it from shattering. Probably take three or four passes. Four. And five. Okay. And the ones that go with the grain, of course, that's a real quick cut. Okay. So that is our first wall. Now, what I usually do here is I'll mark these, and I'll just call this um, Shed A, and I'll just put Shed A. So when I go to glue them on, in case there is a mm. little bit of difference, there shouldn't be, but in case there is. Okay. Now, once these are on, you can see they're raised up just a little bit. Probably have to take some light sandpaper and just sand that down to the bevel and get it down a little bit. For some reason, that's a little bit high there. But you can even take an emery stick or something and just smooth that, mm -hmm. smooth yep. that off. Yep. Okay, so that's A. So now this will be B. And we'll do the same thing here. I try to use a, I use a fine point pen for this so it's real real sharp and you get an exact line. Okay. Mark it. Shed B. And these are nice because there's no windows. <laughs> so they're easy. And probably go inside that line a little bit. I think I I made that a little bit high, so sometimes the blade will want to stray a little bit uh, from the ruler edge. Okay. And another thing that helps if you're gonna use a ruler has like a cord backing, it gives it friction. So sometimes with a steel, a straight steel ruler, I'll have a move on me, and it brings burst of profanity. Yeah, especially if the blade goes into your finger. Yeah, that's not good. You mean like right here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two days ago. <laughs> hey guys, we know what we're doing. Okay. Yeah, that's, that seats down a little bit more than that first one I cut outside the line. Okay, so we got those two done. Now, 
we need one wall because uh, one wall is going to have a door in it. Okay. And um, see, I almost made a mistake there. Oh, there we go. Okay. Going up and down. Okay. All right. Now again, we go. This is our five five degree pitch. And uh, while I'm at it, I'll do the other one too. We're going to modify that a little bit. We'll show you. Sometimes you need to be... You need more hands. need more hands. <laughs> need more space. Um, okay, all I'm doing is trying to make sure this is aligned. I'm going to square that off later. I'm not going to do that. Let me do something else. Um, okay. i got to answer that. I don't know what's going on there. So that looks pretty good. So we'll mark that C. Okay. Okay, we're cutting the end wall here. And it's going to be a bit of a challenge. But we'll show you that, that door that we picked. You can see there is not much room up to the top of that. So what we're thinking of doing actually just cutting two side pieces. Cut a piece here and a piece there and then and then fill in the top there. We'll see how that works out because it's just so darn small. So Bill's making those cuts now. <laughs> How many hands? Yeah. Okay. Will this work? Not so well if we file it down a little bit. Right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Kind of hard to tell. Yeah, we can able to fill the top there with something. Okay. Let's see how good you are cutting a real tiny piece of that board and batten. <laughs> Ooh, thanks. <laughs> um, All right. We promise the rest of this won't be so tedious. Um, the problem with this is the door was too big. It would have shattered the 
board and bat or anything. So what we did, these are two separate pieces, and then we cut just that little top lip off, and for some miracle it didn't break. And I just have those temporarily taped down with double stick tape. But it will actually, the door actually fits. Um, almost. It's going to have to be adjusted a little bit. The door's down. Actually, if Rob cuts the bats off, I think it'll probably be, it's probably going to be okay now, the way it is. So we've got the door done, and we've got all the sides done. So this, this building is basically complete except for the roof, and we'll come back and do the roof later. The rest of this shouldn't be so tedious. Um, so section one is done. Okay, now we're going to have Bill explain his technique for cutting the windows. And we're going to start off by doing this little section here. I'll show you this window and this door. Okay, we need this to look something like... <laughs> yeah, i get this down. It's going to look something like this. Okay. The problem is it's a small piece and things are going to splinter. One thing you can do, and I don't know what board and bat, if I don't use board and bat that much, but use this green tape, and I think maybe if you kind of went through and between the bats, this will help support the grain and maybe keep it from splintering and breaking because these things aren't that far apart and they're going to have a tendency to want to break. So... I would say if you if you're not using board and bat, if you're just using a clapboard siding, you could just lay this on there. But that's pretty rigid, and this stuff peels right off too. So you need I use a ruler with 30 seconds of an inch, and it's going to be really hard for you to see this, yeah. but you have to trust me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what you've seen so far, I know that's going to be a push. <laughs> The total width of this door on the outside part is about 14, 30 seconds, okay? I realize that's 7 sixteenths, but we're going to talk 30 seconds, okay? Mm -hmm. With the overhang, with just the door that goes in, about 13, 30 seconds would do it, maybe 12 to 13. Um, so we went in a quarter of an inch. We already got this marked. We went in quarter of an inch on each side just to give a little bit more room just a little bit more stability in that wood because that it's it's fragile so we marked we just marked the window off um, the window is again from outside to outside looks like it's 14 30 seconds it'll be about 12 the opening's gonna have to be about 12 because there's about a 30 second overhang on each side and then we did the same thing up here. We measured the total, including the outside part, is 29 or 27, 30 seconds. The inner part looks like it's going to be about maybe 26, 30 seconds might do it. So we've marked these off now, and um, we need to cut out where the X's are. And we've got my orientation with the, this going up so that I didn't turn it around. So now it's a matter of a lot of prayer. <laughs> uh, oh, and when I cut, when I drew the lines, I always, you'll see why in a minute, I draw those lines out so I can always see where I am because I'm going to have to flip this around and do different cuts. So um, we'll just see how this goes. This is an awful small. And I'm going to go a little bit inside the line, so if I have to, I can take a... Um, Emery board or something like that. Push file it up, yeah. yeah. File mm -hmm. it down a little bit. Um, so just light cuts, and you, I start right at that line. I kind of go down towards the bottom, not all the way because I don't want to go too far. And when you're going with the grain, it doesn't take nearly as many cuts. I'm through. Okay. I'm through that line. I'm through the wood. Yeah, I'm through. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> Where's the beer? Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, and you go down here, and again it appears I'm through. So what I'll do is I'll flip it, and I'll get right to that line. Now that little mark there tells me where, because I've got 
I've got the main line covered up, but I've got this little mark coming out here. It tells me that's the point I want to be at. And here's where it gets kind of tricky because I don't have anything to rest the ruler on. Except faith. And, um, okay, that should be good. Okay. Now you do the same thing on the horizontal ones. These are going to be a little harder to cut because you're going against the grain, so it takes more swipes. Um, I don't want to go too far. And the whole table's moving because I'm putting pressure on mm -hmm. Because the blade really doesn't want to go through this, even though it's sharp. I probably should change it. Now, because I don't have much to hold on down here, I'm going to flip this around so I've got the whole ruler on the wood. I, I, again, I might be talking down to a lot of you guys, but if you haven't, with laser cut kits, nobody does this anymore. I kind of grew up doing this. Okay, it felt like something popped in the wood. Now, most of it's cut, so now you can just go back and... Just kind of go into your corners, and you want to try to catch all the fibers. You kind of feel it lift. You can always look on the backside. So far, we haven't broken through anything, which is a plus. Okay, something happened there. <laughs> I think it was good. All right, it's coming out. Ah, good. Okay, now, the big question, <laughs> does it fit? Um, almost, we'll file it. It's very close. In fact, it probably will fit, but just a little bit of filing. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good, pretty good. I can live with that. Okay, now we'll do the same here with the door. Nice thing about doors, you only have to make three cuts. And the nice thing about the door, it's got a huge... Huge lip at the top uh, to cover over, so you got a little bit of room to play with. That door on the shed was horrible. I mean, there was no lip on that at all. I don't know. I mean, that's a miracle that <laughs> that fit. But okay, now this is kind of tricky here because you're right on the edge. You got a quarter of an inch. You don't want to break that. Okay, so I'll do my side cut here, and uh, we'll just do a couple of these cuts and show you how to do it, and the others we'll do off, off camera. And I'm sure you've got better things to do with your life than watch me run a Stanley knife through my hand. <laughs> Okay, that's down. I think we had success. Ah, look at that. Almost. Just the tape's holding it. Oh, right in this corner. It's just the tape, though. Okay, now you want to be real careful peeling this off because it is stuck on there pretty good. The nice thing about this, again, where you can see it, this stuff comes off very easy. I kind of prefer the green. I think it just, I don't know, the blue would work fine too. I just like the green better. Now, does it fit? Uh, we'll see. No. <laughs> Let's see if this one fits. That's all right. We can work that out. Um, it's very, very, very close. I think why it doesn't go in is what Rob's going to have to do, these bats. These bats are going to have to be cut off about a 32nd of an inch. Yeah, I can see that, yeah. Okay, so you want to just shave those like about like that. so that you get that flange or whatever that thing on the back of the window that has to sit down on the main part of the wood 
you don't have this issue with clapboard. I was telling Rob I want to build a little narrow gauge railroad, and unfortunately, all those buildings in Colorado were built with board and bat, so I'm going to. A good practice. A good practice. <laughs> and a lot of this is just a matter of trial and error. We won't bore you too much with it, but um, I think that's going to fit pretty good. We'll get it to go. In fact, it just it just popped in. It needs just a little, a little bit more, maybe up here. What I'm doing isn't good cutting towards me, but <laughs> the wood is between me and the fingers. I'll leave that to Mr. Bennett to find ten. <laughs> <laughs> he likes this stuff. Now the door, um, door might need just a little bit. Actually, the door might be okay. The door is okay. The door is okay. Again, it just needs the same thing. See, we just need to go up to... It's really hard to see on the camera, I'm sure. Um, I should file that down just a little bit. A little emery stick works really well. This one's kind of at the end of its life. I think that's pretty much in there, and it's just a matter of going up and trimming off, marking and trimming off those bats so mm -hmm. that it fits flush. So yep. um, if we can do it on this wall, the others are simple. Um, so this side now is complete. Um, this one this one is complete, and uh, just be a matter of gluing that in. Now what... Rob will do here overnight is um, you've got these openings here because you're probably asking when you can see through it. Uh, you'll, you, you can brush on black or you can spray black or you can gloss black, flat black, doesn't make it ever just black. And probably what we'll do is we'll take a little piece of the acetate paper you would normally use behind the window, exactly that size of the window, drop that on there, that'll give you a reflection, and then put the window in and you're never going to see anything. Right. Yep. And he's not concerned here with an interior, um, so we won't... I mean, you could drill out a hole or you could cut out a hole, you know, if you want to put a little room in or something like that. You could dado out a section, like if you wanted to put a room in here and show it, you could run that through a, on a router table and you could route out a section there and then put a little bit of room in. He doesn't want to do that here because it's just... Yeah, I'm not worried about it for the it's shed. A, it's yeah. a shed by a roundhouse, so that's not going to be any, any big deal. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and cut the windows for the other walls, and then um, we'll be back. Okay, we are back. Uh, it's about an hour and a half or so later, but uh, through the magic of video, just a quick fade for you guys. But uh, what Bill did, he went through and cut all the windows out. They're all set up. On this end wall, this here is actually this this far wall. We have no idea what's there, so we just kind of said, so now you know what, we'll put a little kind of a double man door there and a window. Oop. Don't know what's going to be there, but that's what's there for this building. So, so the next step is I'm going to head home. I'm going to work on getting all the windows and doors openings uh, fit up, cut some acetate, paint black behind them where I'm going to put them on. I'm not going to worry about interior on this building at all. Um, then get the walls glued on, get the, get put a roof on it, get everything separate. And then it'll be pretty much ready to go together. So what's uh, what else will there be after that? It's pretty much it, right? Pretty weather it, it. it, yeah, weather it up, and pretty then uh, it. It. get it ready to go on the layout. Figure out where it's going to go. So, so the next we'll, we'll show when we have it together. Um, I got to figure out what color I want to paint it if I want to try to match that. And again, I'm not trying to do this exactly. I'm just this is just kind of an idea to give me a shed, so I'm not too concerned about an exact prototype match, but. I'll find a paint that matches that and get the uh, the shingles for the one roof. Probably use tar paper for the two lower shed roofs. Okay, okay, little in progress here. What I've done is I got one half of the shingles on on the roof. 
just wanted to show I'm just putting them on these are adhesive backed these are rusty stumps HO scale laser cut three tap shingles so I guess I got about half done and then eventually I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to come back and you know, I'll show this later put uh, you know some trim along here I know that it does have a gutter so I probably should try to put gutters in the front it doesn't show a vent on the prototype photo but nah, I don't know if I'll put a vent on it just for fun all right so we're gonna finish this up get the ridge cap on and we'll see how it looks Alrighty, got the roof on here. So both sides are now on. And again, these are self-adhesive. The rusty stumps, three-tab shingles. And then I put, um, uh, what is this one here? That's the rusty stumps, laser-cut starter strips, and well, ridge caps is what I wanted to, to get at. And then what I put in here to make it proud of the roof a little bit, I don't know if it's right or not, but I put a a two by eight I probably should, on each side probably should use the one by eight but I don't have any this is the the pieces that I have left over so I use those because eh, I had it so that kind of gets that ridge to sit a little bit higher up on the ends there I had a one by sixes here on the eaves put some one by sixes on both ends so I'll get those painted up to match this although I forget how I mixed it so I'm gonna have to do, mix it and hope for the best in, in matching it and then it does have gutters. I looked at the picture, and <laughs> there are gutters along this here. And I have some of the the pike stuff gutters, but man, are they small and they are real pita. If you know what pita means, P I T A, yeah, these are. But that, that's what they are. So I might try to get it in there. I, I have to piece it because one's not long enough. So that makes it even more fun. And I also noticed what I think. Look at that. Let me see if I can lay this on the roof and not damage it. Let me see how I do this. Because I need to be able to point. So bear with me here. Like I said, this is not the uh, world's finest video setup. Okay, so if I look at that building, and I don't know how well it will show. Let's see if I, I don't know if this helps or her hinders, but right here, I think there is a vent on the roof. I thought it was part of this pole, but looking closer, I think that's some kind of funky vent. Bottom part and a cylinder and then I, like a little standoff. Now, I don't know that I have that. But I might go into my bag of tricks and see if I have a vent. And it looks like it's sitting to one side of the roof to the front side. So if that's the case, I may just, you know, find something and just kind of put it right here. It's just some type of thing there. And again, you probably can't see in here, but right there, I can definitely tell there's a gutter. It looks like it's starting to fall off, <laughs> which is good because that might be the way mine winds up. So I'll see if I want to put the pike stuff gutter on there. I'll have to use four pieces, two in the front, two in the back, and maybe a little dab of super glue just to get it up there and pray, you know, hope for the best. So, all right. So, that is that. So we'll just keep forging along here. So we're getting there. Getting there. And then get, the, get it together. Of course, it has to be weathered. And I, gotta, I still got to, you know, weather the roof. Um, all of it as well. There's the other and just uh, the other pieces there so that's what we're looking at let me get this piece of paper right here so as of right now again it's not weathered yet but that's how we're getting there we're getting there so all right onward and upward let's uh, keep plugging away at this little guy all righty well here it is got it weathered up um i think it looks relatively Similar, again, not exactly the same type of weathering, but it looks close to the actual building. I decided to, what I did was I kind of dry brushed it first to kind of lighten the kind of the bluish gray color. I did that with some uh, of the Vallejo chalk white and actually then a silver gray. And then I kind of came back in with some weathering powders from uh, Vallejo and ammo of MIG just to kind of dirty it up kind of like the prototype was looking so overall I think it looks I think it's a real good you know 
stand-in for that building. Again, we're not trying to model it exactly. Uh, we like the shape of it. It was something that kind of lended itself well to the block technique, so that's why we kind of picked this building. I don't know if it's exactly right in terms of the overall shape, because I can't see everything on the building from the, you know, the one photograph I had out of the, uh, out of the book. <clears throat> My light here, again, this is not the world's most perfect studio, but, uh, that's it. Now this, interestingly, uh, let me just pan back so you can see I got that roof weathered and put a little bit of stains there on the roof just over time, just some stuff going on. This stuff here, which is the runs, <laughs> rusty stumps, they did not take the, the weathering powders very well at all. So I may want to come back and do a little bit more to that, but for now it's okay. Um, I did notice a little bit more variety uh, on the actual roof of this particular part of the building itself. But eh, for now, I'm happy with it. Get it done. Just get it done so I can get this over on the layout when I get that area done. Because I did that event there. I just found something in my bag of tricks. It's not exactly like the event that's on the building. I think the Pensy did have... The, in fact, the Pensy... I got a plan book from the Pensy. Uh, Pensy building. So this looks like it's a standard, you know, one of their standard uh, sheds, which I wish I had earlier. But anyway, <laughs> it's okay. And they actually even show the vent. So I, I think I could have done that a little more prototypically. But again, we're not necessarily totally worried about exact prototypic a prototypical accuracy on this particular building. So let's see what that looks like. I don't know if I'm going to get light here at the end of it. Again, again, I don't have a... Eh. <laughs> I have a fancy studio here. That's the end, and that's a titchy, just a titchy baggage door we added just to show something there at the end. Because it does look like there's a door at the end of the actual building itself. And continuing our 360 tour... Very similar. It's kind of a plain building. There's really not a whole lot to it. Just a shed. You know, one of those ubiquitous buildings that's always in the engine type areas, industrial type areas, etc., 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 that we don't seem to have a lot of good models of. And there, that, that gutter there, that's on purpose. That is actually... <laughs> it kind of went that way when I glued it on, but I left it. I kind of liked the way it looked. You know, these buildings aren't going to be the world's most uh, well-maintained. So I figured, eh, you know what, I like it. I'm going to leave it hang down like that. So that is uh, that is on purpose when you see that, like that. And then we really had to guess at this end, because we could not at all see this far end of the building. So we put a window and a little double man type door there at that end. And you can see the downspouts for the gutters. Let's see, I apologize. I can't get the best light in this in this environment. So that's it. So a uh, huge thanks goes out to Bill, Bill Shop for his. This is his technique. Again, I thought it was a really cool technique, so I wanted to try it. So I said, Bill, let's do some. He goes, Yep, as long as you make something for your layout. So Bill, thank you very much. And uh, that's it, block building. Basically three different blocks, some uh, northeastern board and batten siding, some uh, rusty stump shingles, pike stuff, gutters, titchy doors and windows, weathered up with, uh, it was dry brushed with some acrylic paint from Vallejo to lighten the, the, the base color, and then just some uh, earth colors, dark earth colors, and, and a really light application of black um, on the siding to kind of weather it like the building itself and then like I said on the roof they were weathered with powders and as I mentioned this doesn't look quite as weathered as I'd like it but for now I'm happy with it so so that is it the block the Bill Schoff block solid block technique something I haven't seen before but uh, now that I've been through it pretty cool technique I like it 
Got some ideas for other stuff. And as a teaser, a long overdue project that I've been working on, Bill and I decided to actually tackle as another block building. So all I'm going to say is it starts with D and ends with R and spelled D-I-N-O-R. And that is correct. That's the correct spelling, Dinor. So stay tuned because uh, that will be coming pretty soon. That's going to be pretty neat. That's going to be a fun project. We're doing something a little bit different on that one. A little more advanced block techniques, but uh, stay tuned for that. Coming out, well, whenever I get around to it, it might be a little while, but uh, we are working it. Bill and I are actively working that project right now. So there you go. So uh, again, huge shout out and thanks to Bill. Hopefully this technique was somewhat interesting and uh, maybe inspires you to try it. And uh, if you do, we'd love to see your work. So uh, post in the comments what you think. And uh, thanks for watching, everybody.